A French appeals court has ruled that the man accused of funding the Rwandan genocide can be handed over to a United Nations tribunal in Tanzania. Felisson Kabuga's lawyers had wanted him to be tried in France, where he was arrested. He faces charges of genocide and crimes against humanity relating to the horrors in Rwanda, during which 800,000 people were killed in 1994. Here's more about Felisson Kabuga. The businessman made much of his wealth from tea farming. Felicien Kabuga had strong links to the former Rwandan president Juvenal Habermana and the then ruling NRMD party dominated by the Hutu ethnic group. Kabuga is accused of setting up and providing funds for the Hutu militia that carried out massacres against rival Tutsi people and moderate Hutus. He also founded a notorious radio station that played a key role in inciting the genocide. A wanted man, Kabuga evaded arrest for years in Africa and Europe, despite reports of him being cited in different countries. After he was eventually arrested in Paris in May, he appeared before France's Supreme Court, there, his lawyer said he was in poor health and in no condition to be tried elsewhere. And I am now joined by Serge Bramets. He is the chief prosecutor for the International Residual Mechanism for Criminal Tribunals. That is the international tribunal handling the Rwandan genocide trials. Welcome to DW News Africa, Mr. Bramets. Uh, Felicio Kabunga uh, wanted to be tried in France. Your preference was that he be tried at the UN's tribunal in Tanzania. What is the significance of where the trial takes place? Good afternoon. Um, in, in fact, it is not the question of, of preference, it's a question about jurisdiction. Uh, when, the Rwanda, when the Rwanda Tribunal uh, closed a few years ago, the residual competences were given to the mechanism, especially in relation to the three remaining main fugitives, and Kabuga is one of those three. So, uh, based on the statute of the mechanism, which has been uh, put in place by the Security Council, Today, the uh, mechanism is the only competent jurisdiction to deal with the Kabuga case. OK, so you say it is the competent jurisdiction, but Mr. Kabuga has said through his lawyers that a UN court in Africa would be biased against him. Is it your view that he is guaranteed a fair trial at the UN tribunal in Africa? There's absolutely no doubt about uh, this. You know, the Rwanda tribunal and the mechanism is operating for more than 20 years. There have been dozens and dozens of, of cases. Our judges are international judges coming from different parts of the world. Uh, same for the investigators and prosecutors. It is a United Nations tribunal with all uh, the independence and impartiality necessary to make sure that it will be a fair trial. Mr. Bramitz, this is a very um, important case for the people of Rwanda. Um, and if memory serves me correct, President Paul Kagame of Rwanda has at, at some point hinted that justice would be better served if Mr. Kabuga would be tried in Rwanda. In the event that Kigali requests to have Mr. Kabuga tried in Rwanda, and I understand that that is a decision that the UN Security Council would have to make, mm -hmm. but do you have any reservations about that? for Mr. Kabuga to be tried in Rwanda? No, personally, I have absolutely no reservations in this regard. You know, in, in general terms, as an international prosecutor, um, I'm always in, in favor of having uh, trials taking place in the country where crimes have been committed, where the victims' communities are living, but also where the perpetrator community is living. So where it is possible, I've always been, been supportive that trials are taking place at the national level. Now, um, today, this um, question, of course, is not uh, on the agenda, if I may say, because um, it has been uh, a fugitive uh, of justice for the Rwanda Tribunal, now for the mechanism. We have the legal authority um, to uh, have this trial taking place at the, the mechanism, and mm -hmm. we are absolutely ready to uh, move this trial uh, forward. Of course, if there would be uh, a decision uh, by the Security Council right. deciding to change the mandate. Um, as prosecutor, well, we are updating our case file and we uh, follow what uh, is decided. Mm. What is important is that a trial is taking place. What is important is that the victims and survivors will be heard. 
And right. for me personally, um, it, this is the main issue, not if the trial is taking place in, in Arusha or in Kigali. OK, and are you confident uh, that you're going to secure a guilty verdict? Um, recently, you were on a fact-finding mission in Rwanda. What can you tell us about that? Well, it will be up to, to judges to decide at the end of the trial about um, uh, guilt or, or innocence. As prosecutors, um, of course, you know, this investigation started in the 90s. The arrest run is from 97. Of course, my predecessors had already collected evidence uh, if not, uh, no international arrest warrant or indictment would be, be issued or, or confirmed. Now, um, obviously, the case is, um, has not been active, if I may say, for, for many years. So it's absolutely normal that, as of the, of the prosecutor, we are updating the existing case file, but we are also looking for additional evidence to strengthen the, the case. Uh, so, uh, I was myself in, in Kigali uh, only three weeks ago, for, for two weeks. Uh, I have, in fact, um, a permanent team there, which will be there for a number of months. It's not just a fact-finding. It is really a minimum for the next six months, if not longer, that I will have um, several prosecutors, investigators, analysts um, okay. in Kigali, um, contacting witnesses which have testified in the past updating um, information, mm. uh, looking for additional evidence. Um, but it's the, the normal way to proceed if an arrest is taking place many, many years after uh, the indictment was issued. Right. So the arrest takes place many years after the indictment is issued. Um, what kind of a time span are we looking at for the actual trial, very briefly, if you can? Well, it's... It's up to the judges once a, a trial chamber has been, been uh, determined and, and, and put together. Now, what I can tell you is that based on, on previous cases with, uh, with uh, arrests taking place at the Rwanda Tribunal, Yugoslav Tribunal, most often it takes up to one year between uh, the, the transfer of the, the um, individual to the mechanism and the start of the trial. So we will definitely not see a, a trial starting uh, somewhere this year. All right, that's Serge Ramitz. Thank you for that, sir. You're most welcome.